This is going to be a quick video showing how I took a satellite LNB from a DirecTV satellite dish and um, repurposing it as a speed measuring uh, radar. Um, this particular unit here has three feed horn sections. Uh, I took the covers off of these two uh, just so you can see what's going on. This is the section that I modified to make it work as radar. I'm going to give you a quick overview and then I'll do a demonstration showing how it works. This feed horn section here and this one here um, are symmetrical, so I'll show you this one for demonstration purposes. What's going on is there's a, uh, it's circularly polarized, so these two antennas here, one is for the right hand, one is for the left hand, and there's a stair step septum in the middle that splits the wave, um, the incoming wave. And it's pretty simple, it's basically a series of low noise amplifiers, and then there's some, I believe they're called uh, edge coupled, uh, these, are, these are bandpass filters right here, and uh, there's some more amplification, and there's a dielectric resonant oscillator, there's actually two of them on this one, there's a DRO here and there's one, you can tell, the telltale sign is a little set screw there to adjust it, and uh, that comes out of a BJT, and that BJT goes to a pretty simple diode mixer array, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a diode mixer, I can't really tell because it's all surface mount stuff. So uh, the one DRO is here, the other one's underneath here, and there's a uh, some coax that connects it on the back of this PCB all the way up to here. So what I did was um, on this this one here, which I'm not showing you, but I took the transistors and I rotated them 180 degrees. So the gate was where the drain is, and then the drain was where the gate was. And then uh, I just cut a couple traces and soldered a couple things so that the biasing circuitry is connected properly so that bias is the gate and drain so that they're mid-rail basically um, on the 12 volts that I'm powering this with. Um, so basically what you end up with is a side that's capable of receiving and then a side that's capable of transmitting. Um, this is on the 10 gigahertz range which is the uh, K -A -K -U band actually and I have the receiving the receiver of this one here coming out um, it comes through a DC blocking capacitor uh, and it goes underneath the shield here and I have that on this red wire here so I'm going to hook that up to my oscilloscope and that's getting mixed with the um, DRO in there, the local oscillator so what's happening is I have one side, one antenna of this feed horn right here transmitting roughly a 10 or 11 gigahertz uh, output that's just directly from the local oscillator and then that's bouncing off of an object and then when it comes back the only pulses that I get out of this red wire here will be the difference of those so I will get a small pulse on here in the millivolt range when we have a difference in phase between the signal that's coming out and the signal that's coming back and that's basically the premise of Doppler speed measuring radar so uh, I'm gonna hook this up to power and my oscilloscope and then we'll give you a demo these can be powered off of anywhere between about 12 and 19 volts, they're not very picky. And actually you can select the different polarizations, either left hand or right hand, if you vary between uh, 13 or 19 volts. In this experiment, it really has no impact on what's going on. So I'm going to power it off, about off, of, uh, power it off of about 13 volts. I have my power supply here, set up to supply the power just through a standard uh, F-type coaxial connector. And you can pick any one of the little connectors on here. I have 50 ohm terminators on, the, or 75 ohm terminators rather, on the ones that I don't need. So hooking that up so that it gets power. And then this red wire is going to go to my oscilloscope. It's powered up and hooked up to the oscilloscope uh, in the top right corner right there. As you can see, when I put my hand in front of the feed horn, you'll see spikes uh, in the output there and that's what we're using to measure so all we have to do is put an object in front of the feed horn here move it towards the feed horn at a known rate and then measure the frequency of those pulses that are coming out of the mixed output of the uh, of the LNB then we plug that into an online calculator because I don't want to do the math myself and that'll tell us the speed so I calculated out that one mile per hour is about 17 inches per second. So the feed horn is right here, and then at 17 inches after that, I have this uh, as a barrier basically to reflect the signals back into the LNB here. And it's very imprecise, this is just a rough proof of concept. Uh, right here, I have, uh, I might give you a better look at that. 
This is just so I can keep time. This is a frequency generator set to generate one hertz. So uh, I'm just going to kind of do this by hand. I'm going to hit trigger on the oscilloscope, uh, trigger uh, basically capture for about five seconds, and then I'm going to move this closer to the L and B so that when the needle hits zero and when it hits one, this is moved to 17 inches. So it's very rough and uh, very imprecise, but we should get a result uh, there about one mile per hour. So I have my finger on the single capture of the oscilloscope and I'm set to capture a 500 millisecond uh, per division so that's going to be uh, about 5 seconds or rather 2 seconds for the entire capture and I'm going to move the object closer to it in time right. and here's the waveform that we got this is the interesting part which has our pulses so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and uh, let's slide over to that. So those are my pulses. I'm going to open up some cursors, put one cursor on one pulse, put the other on the other, and we're going to get a frequency in hertz. So uh, one here. All right. Um, and like I said, this is very imprecise. It's just an estimate, um, but it's it will be a good proof of concept. And uh, as you can see, the frequency I got here is 30.86. We'll just say 30.9 hertz. And uh, I found uh, there are a couple of good websites to do this. One of them was hyperphysics.phy-astr.gsu.edu. If you just search for uh, uh, speed measuring radar calculator, this should come up. You have to enter the transmitting frequency. In my case, I'm pretty sure it's about 12.25 gigahertz. Sorry, 11.25 gigahertz. I have no uh, test equipment capable of measuring that, so uh, we're just going with that. It's uh, not too sure about that. And then I enter in the beat frequency. In this case, uh, the term beat is, is the difference, is frequency 1 minus frequency 2, where frequency 1 is the transmitter frequency, frequency 2 is what's being received. So it's going to be that uh, phase shift. Those pulses are going to be how often we're getting that phase change. And we said that the one off this experiment was 30.9 hertz. And when I hit enter, we'll see that the speed in miles per hour is 0 0.92 miles per hour. And the way this is laid out is kind of misleading. The meters per second is this value here, miles per hour here, kilometers per hour is this value, and feet per second is this value. So we measured 9.2 miles per hour, which is very, very good, considering I was moving an object by hand without a proper timer, and uh, we don't even know the correct uh, local oscillator frequency on this. So I'm overall uh, quite pleased with that result. And I'm looking forward to doing some more cool experiments with this LNB. It's uh, microwave electronics are really, really fun. And it's not too difficult to get into because these LNBs are so cheap. So you really can get into playing with this stuff for less than $25 or so. You just need some decent test equipment. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I forgot to show you the modifications I made. So this is the first feed horn which I made the transmitting modifications to. I used a video by Jerry Ellsworth for reference on this. That was a very big help and I probably wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. So um, I'll put a link to her channel. There's some really, really interesting stuff. What's going on here is this is the unmodified receiving side and there's a transistor, some filtering, you know, bandpass filtering. So this is just amplification, and then it's coming out right here, and that's where I'm measuring it. This chip here is responsible for biasing the transistors. Well, they're, uh, they're not bipolar, they're, they're more of a CMOS. These are uh, RF specialized FETs. I'm not exactly sure what kind of FET they are. And um, there are two FETs, one here, one here, that I using a rework station, I took those off and flipped them and then uh, I had to play around and figure out what traces to cut and um, 
to swap around the biasing circuitry. It wasn't too complicated at all. Um, and then there's a third transistor here that is not necessary and that should be removed because that's the final amplification before that would get mixed. But this channel is not supposed to be mixed. So instead of that, um, we're just connecting right to this transistor here from the local oscillator. The DRO is right here. Then um, on the back side of this, there's a piece of coax. Here's the solder point here. And then it ends up right here. Then that gets amplified. This is just another FET. And uh, I'm coupling that uh, negative 2 volt oscillator ish um, through a, I don't know, it's like a 100 picofarad or so. I really don't know the exact value. I just kind of grabbed it. So I'm coupling that through a ceramic cap all the way over here to this point here, which is the gate of a transistor or a FET rather. And uh, then the drain of that is going to the gate of another FET. And then the drain of that FET goes to an antenna here. So that's it. It's really not that complicated at all, even though this thing looks really crazy and it got cool patterns on it and stuff. In case you're wondering how to do that math without that calculator, uh, the formula is pretty simple. You can just do velocity is equal to the change in frequency, or which is that beat frequency, and that's equal to the absolute value of the transmitted frequency minus the received frequency times the wavelength. And uh, in our case, the beat frequency was about 35 hertz, and um, the wavelength of 11.25 gigahertz is 26 millimeters, and then you divide that by two. And in our case, that's pretty simple. Just take the 35 hertz, multiply that by the wavelength, 26 millimeters. I'm gonna put, the mil put that into inches by multiplying by 0 0.039370787. Divide by two millimeters per sec, or inches per second rather, multiply, or multiply that, divide that by 12, divide that by 5,200, 280, and then multiply it by 3,600, and we get one mile per hour.